As we turn now to God's word, let's have a moment of prayer. Lord God, as you once spoke to your servants down through the ages in many and different ways, we know that you have spoken and continue to speak to us through this written word, which is a great treasure to your church. We ask now, Lord, as we open that word in the context of community, that you would teach us your truth and help us to apply it to our lives. We ask and pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the book of Luke, chapter 6, verses 12 through 19. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by evil spirits were cured, And the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week, I began a new series of messages with the overall theme being living like Jesus. I wanted us to understand that living like Jesus has become an an important value to me at this stage of my life. I think that if, if Christians lived more like Jesus than we sometimes do, that it would be better for our nation in in this time when we seem to be divided by partisanship. What we as Christians bring to the table in the public forum is is love and grace and a willingness to listen and, and accept people who are different from us. And if we cannot bring that to the table, if we cannot behave in in civil a civil manner, how can we expect others to do so? So I wanted to say a few things in this series on living like Jesus in the hope that it may be helpful to us as we seek to be faithful to our calling. I began the series by talking about how Jesus was not afraid to break some rules in his life and ministry when doing so made a difference in the life of another person. And today I want to talk about how Jesus made sure that he spent time talking to God, his Father. He stayed connected with God through prayer. I don't want to steal any of Dennis's thunder. Hopefully, we'll, we'll whet your appetite for the course that he wants to teach in the near future. And I want to begin by asking this question of children and teenagers who may, who may be present. Did you know that there was a time in our public schools when we not only recited the Pledge of Allegiance, like I'm sure you do today, but we also read the Bible and had prayer that was usually spoken by our teacher? Well, if you're in grade school, chances are your parents did not have that experience, but your grandparents probably did. When I went to elementary school, we had prayer and, and Bible read, uh, a Bible reading every day. And I can remember starting, I, I can remember starting our day with that all the way back to the fourth grade. I don't remember after that, so I'm guessing that's when it, when it stopped. I had a wonderful fourth grade teacher who was a devout Christian woman, and she made sure that those things happened every day. But that stopped because in the 1960s, the Supreme Court of our country declared that a school-sponsored prayer in public schools was unconstitutional. And that decision has divided America, like many decisions of the Supreme Court have divided us. And some people think that our country has gone downhill since then, and that that was That was the start of it. And if we would just put prayer back in schools, our problems would go away. I don't happen to to share that point of view. I think it's much more nuanced and much more complicated than that. As a a person who was bullied in school by children who heard those Bible readings and heard those prayers, I can tell you that there were a lot of people who were not affected one little bit by those things that took place in school. 
Children learn values and behaviors primarily in the home. So if you want your children to pray, if you want them to love and follow Jesus, teach them at home to pray. Teach them, show them how to love and follow Jesus. Model for them the behavior you want them to see, and I'll put a plug, bring them to church, because those things I think are a far more effective, effective way to infuse our society with Christian values and virtue. If we look at the Gospels, what they tell us about Jesus, we see that there were times when he went off by himself and spent significant time alone with God. And I, I think we can see a couple of things in there we may want to emulate. First of all, we, we know that Jesus made this a priority. He made time for it. As he, uh, he often did so when he was facing a difficult decision or an important time in his life. In this story, we see that Jesus spent a whole night by himself before he chose his disciples, his inner circle that would be his followers, that would later carry on his, his ministry and the mission of the church, and they become the leaders of the early church. There would, there would be no do-over for this crucial choice. So Jesus wanted to get it right. And the fact that the church, the Christian faith, spread so rapidly and became so successful suggests that, that Jesus certainly made the right choices. Now, someone may quibble and ask, what about Judas? Was it a mistake to choose Judas? I would suggest that having Judas as a disciple was an important part of the story as it would develop. Jesus knew he had to, to go to the cross, and Judas was an important part of that whole process. Second, although Jesus often prayed with his disciples and followers, he also went off by himself to pray, and I, I assume to get away from distractions. We can well imagine the demands on Jesus were great, especially after people learned that he had this tremendous power to heal diseases and, and change the conditions of people's lives. Our story that we just read talked about how the people just thronged around him to feel, to get a piece of that power to change their lives. Years ago, the rock opera Jesus Christ Superstar, you know, portrayed these demands very well and suggesting that there may have been times when Jesus was almost overwhelmed by the demands of people. And the only way to get away, the only way to get away from those demands is to carve out times of solitude. Now, if you're a fan of Superman, you may know that he has a fortress of solitude. And there have been different versions of that fortress of solitude through the years because Superman has been a, a comic strip character and he's been the, the, the main character of several TV shows, movies, video games, and, and so on. But the general idea of the fortress of solitude is that's a place where Superman can go to get away, to recover from his injuries, to, to work on some new project. I think in some stories he had a laboratory there or just to hang out in a, in a safe place. It may be that Superman was an introvert and needed time away. Well, Jesus did not have a fortress of solitude, but he found places where he could be alone. Oftentimes they were up on a mountain, away from the distractions of life. And he carved out time so that he could stay connected with God. Now, many of us can get... Uh, distracted rather easily by things that grab our attention. Depending on our personality, these distractions can become a, a problem when they keep us from doing the things that we really need to do. As a driver, I, I've been known to look at really interesting cloud formations and comment on them, much to the consternation of my passengers. The messiness of my desk perhaps is the strongest proof that I am easily distracted when I am at work unfinished projects sit all over my desk. It's not that I don't get things done, it's just that I'm easily distracted. Well, in our prayer life, some of us can get easily distracted as well by things going on um, around us, outside of us, and even by our internal thoughts and feelings. And that's why getting away from these distractions or finding time and space for solitude is so helpful for some people. Ward Cushman, who writes an online blog, Christian blog, listed several reasons why Jesus made time for solitude. He, first of all, did it to whenever he was preparing for a major task. 
We know that after he was baptized, the Gospels tell us that Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness fasting and praying to prepare for the temptation that the devil would bring him and also to prepare for the start of his public ministry. And also the, the night he was arrested, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, but at some point he left them alone and went off by himself to pray. He often found sol solitude in order to recharge after hard work. On one occasion, Jesus sent his 12 disciples out to do ministry with, without him. And when they returned, he encouraged them to, to get away from the crowd of people who were, who were following them so that they could rest. He, he made time for solitude to work through his grief. When Jesus learned that Herod had killed his cousin, John the Baptist, he went away by himself to, to process his grief. And as we saw here, before making an important decision, Jesus often spent time alone with God. Cushman made a helpful comment when he said that time spent in solitude with God is not time spent alone. I think it's pretty clear that when Jesus spent time with God like that, it prepared him for the work he was called to do. Spending time alone with God, connecting with God, enabled him to be the Savior of the world that we needed. So if we're going to live like Jesus in this particular area of life, I think we I have a couple of suggestions. First of all, we need to make prayer a priority. We're all busy people with lots of things to do. You know, getting the kids up and off to school and doing all the household chores that have to be done. And then there's work that some people have to go to and paying the bills and getting to all our medical appointments and running the kids to their soccer games and their, their dance classes and their gymnastics and whatever else that they may be involved in. And then catching up on the, the latest episodes of our favorite TV shows, whether we binge watch something from Netflix or whether we sit down and watch three hours of TV on our favorite night of television. But we tend to make time for the things that are important to us, things that matter to us. So if we want to have a close relationship with God in Christ, we need to make, we need to make prayer a priority. Some people find that the first thing in the morning works for them, and others you know, find that taking time before they go to bed at night is, is helpful. Some folks pray when they walk, and some folks find that when they are alone in their car, that's a good time to pray. That works for me. If you see me driving in my car and, and I appear to be talking, don't assume that I'm talking to somebody on my phone. I may be, I may be talking to God. While time alone with God is important, it's not the only way to pray. Uh, corporate prayer is also a significant way to stay connected with God. And there are different ways of uh, praying together as God's people. Some traditions emphasize extemporaneous prayer offered by their worship leader on behalf of the people who have gathered. And that means that the, the, the pastor or worship leader doesn't come with any notes or prepared manuscript. He just prays as the Spirit leads him or her. And, and uh, some people do that very well, and some traditions think that's the only way to pray. When I was going to a college, there was a, I attended a small Presbyterian church where the pastor would call on people at the end of worship to close the worship in prayer, and that terrified me. There were some people who were really good at praying extemporaneously, eloquent prayers, but not me. And so when I knew he was going to do that, that's when I really dropped to my knees figuratively, and I would pray, Lord, let him call on somebody else. Let him call on somebody else. Some traditions put more focus on using prayers that are prepared in advance. Some prayers that go go way back, hundreds of years, and, and that's an important way for us to stay connected with the tradition of the church that goes back so long. And I've used these prayers more often in the last few years than ever before in my ministry, not because I'm lazy, but because I want to choose my words very carefully. Some traditions uh, encourage or focus on silent prayer, like the Quakers. They may have a meeting where nobody says anything for a whole hour, and that's okay. They'll and they'll go home and nobody's prayed anything or spoken anything. That's just the way they do it. Some Christians have found that praying with a prayer partner is helpful. Meeting with your partner on a regular basis and praying for each other and certainly praying with your spouse is a very important discipline. So there are many ways 
to stay connected with God through prayer. We just need to make it a priority. Now, when we are engaged in solitude as a way of staying connected with God, we need to remember to listen as well as speak. To listen to what God may be saying to us in those moments of silence. And this, is, this takes practice. It's not an easy thing to do. I have to admit that sometimes we, we may not hear anything from God, but at other times, God will speak very clearly. He'll put an idea in our head that speaks loud and clear to an issue that maybe we may be wrestling with that we have brought to him, to the mercy seat of God. In my own life, I know sometimes a hymn or a song may come to my mind or a verse of the Bible that I've memorized or a story from the Bible that, that speaks to a situation that, that I've been praying about. And then sometimes my mind just goes all over the place in a stream of consciousness way until I have an aha moment and, and God speaks to me there. And then sometimes I will admit that my mind will start singing, it's a small world, and I have to stop and just get focused on something else. But listening to God's message is just as important as pouring out our heart to him. So all of us who love and follow Jesus want to live more like him. That's my assumption. I think it's correct. That's one of the things that has the power to make a real difference in this world. And one of the things Jesus did in his life was stay connected with God through times set aside for prayer. Now, next Sunday is the first Sunday of Lent, and that's a season of the year when many Christians will embrace new disciplines as a way of, of deepening their walk with God. And let me encourage you, all of us, to, to make more time for prayer in the next few weeks as we head into the Easter season, you know, several weeks later. And here are some suggestions. Every time you look at your phone, say a prayer for someone you know or some situation that concerns you. When watching TV and a commercial comes on, mute the TV and take some time to pray. When you're walking around the neighborhood with or without a dog, pray for the people who live in the houses that you may pass, or the people who are driving in the cars that may pass you on the road, or for the people who work at the different commercial enterprises that you may pass on your, on your walk. And if you can't come to worship, some Sunday for whatever reason, and I know that that happens to, to all of us, take five minutes to pray for the church's meeting that day, maybe your, your own church, your pastor, your organist, the music, the choir, and ask God to, to bless the worship leaders and, and the preachers, and ask God to inspire and, and feed the people who will be attending worship that day at the different churches all over this country. So take some time. Take time to connect with God. You will not be disappointed in what it does for you. Let's pray. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for the example that Jesus set of how he showed that it's important for us to stay connected with you. It's important for us to set time aside and make it a priority. Help us, oh God, to do what we need to do to make sure that we stay connected with you. We ask and pray it in Jesus' name.